guys, thanks for joining me here. My name is Mindy. I'm gonna be going over a horse barn design with you today. This particular client is looking for a gable style building. One of the first things you're gonna to want to decide when you're doing a horse barn design is what kind of building look are you looking for? So this is your traditional gable. Um, we do see a lot of monitors that come through. So something similar to that or your more traditional barn look. Just spin this around so you can see. But for this particular client, we're gonna do a gable. The next thing you want to think about is size. So how many styles do you want? How wide do you want any runway down that middle to be or access from the inside of the barn? And then where are you going to keep your feed stack? Um, you're probably going to want a tack room or anything else like that. Some people also want to be able to have a clean stall. So basically a stall where they can you know, do all the washing, grooming, and all of that fun stuff. And then once you kind of have that figured out what you're looking for with that building, the next thing we're going to want to look at is size. So typically we see most horse barns have a 12 by 12 stall in them. So this allows for ample room for those animals to move around and still be able to give you a decent walkway um, depending upon your building width. So for this particular building, we're going to do a 36 by 36. And then we are going to switch this over to a pole and rafter. So what that does is that sets up the inside of your building here so that we have basically the supports in place for this customer to put in their own cells on their own down the road. And then so they'll have a stall in here, two and three, and then this is the area where they'll be able to drive through. Um, that This is a part that sometimes gets overlooked a little bit. If you think about if you have a horse go down in one of these stalls, you're gonna wanna be able to get your vet into there, there's you know the vet mobiles depending upon what you have. Um, so typically, you're gonna want at least 10 to 12 feet for that walkway. Some people recommend going up to 16 feet. It's all personal preference, kind of at that point. But I personally think that that 12 foot works very well in these particular designs. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on a side shed here. She wants to be able to have a little overhang for her horses to hang out under. So we're gonna put in that side shed. We're gonna make that roof only. And then we're gonna go into our doors. So for entrance into these stalls, we're gonna place four foot openings. So we're gonna put three of them in there. And then something we have learned, or at least I've learned here since I've been helping out with these horse stalls, a lot of horse owners prefer to put their openings right up next to that post so they're not in the middle of the stall. Um, apparently it's just something that works a little better for most horses. Again, this is personal preference. You can kind of put them where you feel you need them. And then this customer plans to leave these stalls completely open so that the horses can go in and out as they please throughout the day. We're also going to need to put in an entry door for the people. So your human door, we're going to go back one more here. We're going to put in one four foot entry door. That's what they had requested. And then we are also going to put in a glass window. Natural light was something this customer is particularly looking for. It's something that's very important to them. So we're going to put in that four foot window or that four foot door with a window inside of it. Now you could do a three foot man door if you wanted. Um, I would recommend using that four foot door. It's a lot easier to get yourself and tack through. So if you're carrying a saddle, it's a little easier to get through that four foot door than it is going to be to get through that three foot. So I'm going to put this here. Boop, boop. Oops. Put our four foot door on this side actually. So it's not going straight into the tack room. And then we're gonna put in sliding doors for that entrance. So she was looking for a 12 by 10 and to be able to drive through that building. That was something that was also very important. So we're gonna put two, go on through, and we're gonna place these right here at 12 feet. 
and then this one here at 12 p.m. Now, when this particular sliding door opens, it is gonna be a biparting door and it is gonna cover up this four foot man door. That's something that they weren't worried about just for the layout of this, um, of this barn itself. It's something that they, they wanted that front door to be on the entrance. So then we're gonna go on to roofing and then siding. They also wanted to use a wainscot. So basically that's putting that trim around the bottom so that bottom half can be a little bit um, easier to kind of repair if something happens. It's easier to replace that one three foot section than it is gonna be to replace from the bottom all the way up. And also it kind of gives it a little more character, able to give it a different color there. For windows and lighting, like I had said before, for this particular client, they want a lot of natural light in there, but they don't wanna add a lot of glass. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to include Eve lights. So we're gonna include white polycarbonate panels, and then we are just going to put that on the right side here. So that will pop up here, so that the top two to three feet, they'll be able to get natural light in. Now if they didn't have the side shed on the side, I would recommend putting it on both sides, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense to put it underneath where that's gonna be blocked off with that side shed. Our next step here to think about is condensation barrier. So this particular client is looking for something that's gonna be fast and easy to put up. So they're opting for drip snap. It comes already applied to the metal. That way they just can put up their roof um, with a horse barn or any sort of livestock. You're gonna want some sort of vapor barrier or moisture barrier in there. Um, just cause they're putting off, they're breathing a lot. There's a lot of air and there's a lot of moisture. And then speaking of kind of getting all that moisture out of the building, they're also gonna use a vented ridge with enclosed soffits and overhangs. So we're gonna put those on. And this particular client wanted just the 12 inches here. So there we are. So again, for ventilation, we're using a ridge vent, vented soffits, and then she had also requested using a couple of gable vents. So we're gonna put those we're gonna add two to her quote here, just for some added ventilation. And then our other option would be to put on some windows, but like I said, they were looking for more natural light without using a lot of glass. And then we just wanna make sure that we have it pole and raftered, make sure that pole layout looks okay. So when I added the doors, um, it popped off those poles but that's something that's easy to change. So I'm just gonna go back in here and change that pole layout so that we can ensure this client has those 12 by 12 styles that they're looking for. There we go. So that is how I design at least this particular horse barn. So I just wanna say thanks for joining me in the design studio.